Good morning and welcome to Robertson Wesley Kids Worship. My name is Reverend Karen and as always I'm so excited to be here with you worshiping today. Remember that wherever we are, no matter how many of us there are, that God is with us. When we gather to give thanks to God and to praise God, we are worshiping with one another. And so if you are on Facebook, I hope that you will send me some messages in the comment box or using emoticons, whatever works for you. So good morning to Charlotte and Emmy and everyone else who is joining us far and wide. So we are in the season of Advent. I started talking about this last week. The season of Advent is the beginning of our liturgical church year. So not January 1st for the church. Our season, our year starts as we prepare. Good morning, everyone. Owen and oh my goodness, so many people. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yes. Okay. Season of Advent. It lasts for four weeks, and it's it leads up to Christmas. So we are in week number two, the second week of Advent. In this particular week, the theme is peace. So the first week was hope. Second week is peace. Hope, peace, hope and peace. So I wanted to explore that a little bit more, but I thought we would start with the song we learned from the angels last week, the Gloria song. So I hope that you will sing it with me in your most angelic of poses. So, so get your arms out, get ready to be very angelic. <clears throat> Are we ready? Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Good morning, everyone. So, that is the song of the angels. What's really interesting about the story leading up to Christmas time, the stories of Advent, is that there are lots and lots of messages. Messages that are being given to key people in the story like Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the wise people. But also, even before that, there were messages being given to people about who was going to come, about the fact that God was going to send a special gift. God was going to find a way so that we could actually know God, know God directly, that we wouldn't have to go through a minister like me, but that you could know God directly. And the way that God sends messages is sometimes through what we call prophets. Prophets are people who have been given the word of God to be shared with the other people. So messages from God for the people. And in Advent, we often follow the prophet Isaiah. Now, Isaiah is a book in the Bible, and it's in the Old Testament. And in the book of Isaiah, there are a lot of prophecies. So people kind of predicting or reminding people of what is to come, kind of looking into the future and knowing that something amazing is going to happen. Now, Isaiah, as I said, is, is a very familiar one that we love to use in the season of Advent because Isaiah talks about preparing for the promised one. The promised one being Jesus, just in case you didn't know. The promised one is Jesus, and that's who we're waiting for. And like I said, Advent is about waiting, 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 waiting. The passage we're going to hear today in church at 1030 is from Isaiah chapter 40. And it starts off by saying, Comfort, oh comfort my people. What's so interesting about this is the fact that, um, do you hear the music? Oh, <laughs> God is saying to the people, comfort, I give you comfort. I want you to know that I am with you and that you are not alone. I don't know about you, but right now, 
there's a lot of things I want some comfort for. Um, a lot of us talk about comfort food. What is your favorite comfort food? Mine is definitely macaroni and cheese. Love it. I could eat it every day. But I was thinking about it. What makes you feel better? What brings you comfort? How do you comfort somebody else who is sad? What are the things that you do to help people and comfort them in times that are difficult? Um, times when maybe one of your siblings is crying or, or maybe your parents are upset. What do you do to comfort people? Um, one of the things I, I've always loved is when, uh, when I was upset, I would, I would go have a shower to kind of just relax. The, the feeling of the water always made me feel better. And then when I got out of the shower when I was a kid, my mom would have warmed up the towels in the dryer. And so I'd end up with this nice warm towel wrapped around me where I felt just so good. Um, just felt really, really nice. That was one of the ways that I would find comfort. Another way would be to just sit with my dog and pet my dog for a long time or maybe curl up beside them. Um, snuggle with my doggies. Uh, sometimes, I don't know if, if your parents ever did this, but they would rub my back and just, it would feel so nice as they would either draw designs on my back. I just found it to be really peaceful and comforting. So if you think about the world right now, would you say that our world is a place of peace? Or is our world a bit crazy right now? Is the world out of sorts? Is the world crying out for comfort? Do you think the people in this world are crying out for comfort? Because I certainly do. I feel like I'm hearing people cry out every day. Why? 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 How much longer must we endure? How much, how much more do we have to do in order to get back to the way things once were? And so God is saying through the prophet Isaiah that I'm going to bring you comfort. Comfort, oh comfort my people. God's saying, I want to comfort you. I want to hold you in my arms, give you a big hug and comfort you so that you know that you're not alone and that I am with you always. So that's kind of what the prophet was talking about today. And it goes well with the idea of peace. And so one of the things that can bring us comfort in Advent is lighting candles. So last week we lit the candle of hope. Today we're going to light, relight the candle of hope and the candle of peace. Hope and peace. I'm just going to shift this here so you can see them both. So today we're going to light the candle of hope and peace, remembering that we have hope because we know Jesus is coming on earth to bring good news to all of us. We know that God has sent this glorious gift to care for us and protect us. So we light the candle of hope and the candle of peace. So we're looking for peace in our world. Where do we find peace? Well, as we think about that, one of the things that brings me peace too is by singing. So we are gonna sing the light one candle song that we sang last week. Um, so it's light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. He brings hope to every heart. He comes, he comes. Now, who is he in this song? Oh, it's Jesus. Jesus brings hope to everyone. Yes, I totally agree with you, Arlie. I think the world is going a little crazy. All right, so let's sing this together. Light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. for peace, one bright candle for peace. He brings peace to every heart he comes, he comes. Light one candle for joy, one bright candle for joy. Every nation will find salvation. 
Okay. So if today is the day of peace, where we are seeking peace for the world, one of the ways we can do this is through a greeting that we do in worship. And it's called passing the peace. Now, how do we pass peace to one another, you may wonder? Well, here's how we do it. Now, in normal times, we could give each other a hug and say, peace be with you. Sometimes we could shake hands and say, peace be with you. But in this time of COVID, we need to be a little more creative and we need to think about other ways of doing it. So you can give the fist pump, peace be with you. You can give the elbow, peace be with you. Or you could put your hands together and say, peace be with you. You can cross and say, peace be with you. You can send out love, peace be with you. And the response is, and all the way also with you. So I'm gonna pass the peace to you and I want you to pass it back to me. Are you ready? Peace be with you. Did you say and also with you? Let's try it again. Peace be with you. Thank you. Now we have shared the peace of Christ, the peace of God with one another. All right. So that's one way we can do it. So you could walk around and pass the peace to your family today. Might be a good idea. The other way we're going to do this is through making peace doves. Now, if you haven't done this already, this is what we're going to do. Now, this can be found on Between the Aisles. You can also ask your parents to go on the e-news, the Still Spirited newsletter that comes out each week from the church. And on there will be a link to this template. So we are hoping that we are going to have doves of peace all over the sanctuary by the end of Advent. So we have a couple more weeks to do this. But what we need you to do is to cut out, and so we're gonna cut along those dark lines, but not on the ones that have little dots beside them. And I want you to either mail it or deliver it to the church. And that way then Laura and I can hang them all up. So we are going to create, now you can, you can draw it yourself too if you're an artist, feel free to create your own dove. Um, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can make it out of different paper. Maybe you have some really cool wrapping paper that you wanna make it out of. Maybe you've got some gold or white glitter or something. Um, whatever works for you is totally fine with me. Because remember, we're all different and we're all individuals. But we're hoping that on your dove that you might write a couple words if you're able to or draw some pictures of, of things you hope for in the world. Where do you hope there will be peace in the world? Where do you find hope in the world? What gives you hope and what brings you peace? I've talked about a few things that bring me peace, whether it's, uh, like I said, maybe it's a cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows. Maybe that makes you feel peaceful. Maybe it's sitting in front of your tree with the lights on or maybe going outside and having a campfire and roasting some marshmallows. I think I saw some of you doing that recently um, in your yards, those of you that have yards. Um, how else might you find peace in this crazy world these days? So I hope you are making your dove as well. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. Um, trying to find the lines here. I'm gonna poke a little hole. So like I said, the prophet Isaiah predicted that Jesus would be coming, would be coming on earth to bring some good news. But the prophet also went on to say that we need to prepare the way. We need to prepare a pathway so that Jesus can get to us a little more easily. Um, and so in the prophecy, it said that the mountains will be made low and the valleys will be brought up and that the land will be even in the end, um, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. All right, here I have my dove template. Now, I might put words of hope on it. Um, what am I hoping for? I'm hoping um, for an end to fighting. I'm hoping for an end to fighting. And I hope to see you all soon. Okay. 
That's what I'm hoping for. So that's what it is. Now, we're supposed to fold. You see where those dotted lines are? We're supposed to fold there. And then we fold along these lines here because we want the dove to be able to fly. It's kind of like making an airplane in some ways. All right, so we know we've got the wings and then the tail's supposed to do this as well. And so like I said, you could trace this template onto other paper that you really like to create a beautiful dove. Um, and then there's a little strip in the top corner and that's to hold it together. Um, and I forgot to bring tape with me or glue, so I can't do it today, but you'll get the idea. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, they have to make straight a pathway so that Jesus knows how to find us. Jesus knows how to get to us. It's kind of strange because you know as well as I do that we can't tear down mountains. But luckily God is pretty amazing and God can do things that we would never believe. So your, your strap is going to go on there and that way when it's hanging up, it'll look like it's flying. Ooh. Okay. So you all have a, a job to do. I want you all to get your bird template and I want you to decorate it and I want you to mail it to me or drop it off at the church. You can put it through the mail slot at the church or drop it off on Sunday during the week, whenever, it doesn't matter. Um, but I hope that you will make a dove and send it to me to add to our flock. Um, so how do we make a pathway straight? How do we bring down the mountains and how do we fill up the valleys. Now, prophets like to speak in all sorts of different ways. It doesn't mean that we literally have to pull down the mountains. We just need to create a pathway so that we know which direction to go. Um, sometimes that means going around the mountains a little bit. Sometimes it means that maybe in the snow we need to shovel and make a nice little path so it's nice and even for everybody to walk on. Whatever it is we have to do, that's what we have to do. And that gives us something to do while we're waiting. I don't know about you, but I'm not good at waiting for things. Are you still waiting for your presence or have you started sneaking around and trying to see them? Um, I hope you'll wait. I hope you'll wait so the surprise is great. Uh, what do we need to do to prepare for Jesus? How do we prepare a path for Jesus? Well, one of the ways we do that is by lighting candles so we can show the way. Um, maybe we need to make our lives a little bit simpler. Maybe we need to let go of some things in order to focus on Jesus. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we need to find peace. Good morning. Um, Maybe we need to find peace. How are we going to find peace in this world? What are we going to do to help create peace in this world? Because we have a job to do. We do have a job to do. <sighs> you know, let's just sing like the angels sing one more time and give thanks to God knowing that God's going to help us figure this out. So, ready? Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Shall we pray? Let's pray together. Dear God, we have heard the cries from you. Comfort, oh comfort my people. And we are so glad that you want to take care of us, that you love us so much, that you would send Jesus down here on earth to be with us so that we could know you, so that we could meet you in a way that maybe we couldn't have before. We wanna give you thanks for all the things that we have in our lives. Help us to remember to share what we have with others, to bring peace to this world, to end fighting, to end the strife and all of the hardships that people are enduring. We have hope that things can change if we each just do one little thing. 
Thank you, God, for our family and friends, and we ask that you keep them safe in this time of COVID. We are grateful for everything, our nurses and doctors and EMTs and police and techs and labs and all of the people do to help make sure that the spread of COVID slows down. Help us each to make good choices this week in a way that will care for one another. We give thanks for our pets and, and for all the people who are important in our lives. And we lift all of these prayers up to you, O oh God, including the ones that we say to you now in the silence of our hearts. And finally, God, we're going to say the words that Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to teach you one last song. It's a peace song. It's called Go Now in Peace. And so this is my blessing to all of you in the coming week. Go now, go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go in peace. And remember that you are not alone and that God loves you. I miss you all, and just a reminder that today at one o'clock we have a communion service, so get some bread, get some juice, and get ready for the opportunity to feast together. And then tonight we have a blue Christmas service, so anybody who's lost somebody really important to you in your life, maybe somebody's died and you wanna remember them, we're having a service tonight online at 7 p.m., and so you can always join us then. And then just to let you know, we will be having a Christmas Eve service just for all of you at four o'clock on Christmas Eve. So I hope that you will join me for that as well. I will see you next week and I hope you have a good week. Stay safe. May the peace of Christ be with you. Bye friends. <laughs>